Welcome to Club Academia, where curiosity meets knowledge. Have you ever wondered why our planet is rich in iron but so scarce in precious metals like gold and silver? Why do some elements seem to be everywhere, while others are nearly impossible to find? Today we're diving deep into the fascinating world of geology and chemistry to unravel this mystery. Let's explore why Earth has so much iron but so little gold and silver. Most of the elements found on Earth were formed in the hearts of stars. During the life cycle of a star, hydrogen fuses into helium and continues fusing into heavier elements up to iron. During a supernova explosion, the conditions are incredibly extreme. The explosion not only disperses iron into the universe, but also creates even heavier elements through rapid neutron capture, known as the R process. This is where elements heavier than iron, such as gold and silver, are formed. The R process, or rapid neutron capture process, is responsible for about half of the stable atomic nuclei that are heavier than iron on the periodic table. Significant portion of the heavier elements are formed through this process, including elements like gold, platinum, and uranium. Because iron is the last element created during a star's life cycle before it becomes a supernova, it is found in much larger quantities in the universe. In fact, after iron, elements like gold and silver are produced in much smaller amounts during the explosion, which is why they are so rare in the universe and on Earth. First, let's talk about iron. Iron makes up 35% of Earth's mass and 5.2% of Earth's crust. Iron accounts for a third of Earth's mass. Most of it exists not in the crust, but within the core. It exists as a liquid in the outer core and as a solid in the inner core. In fact, 91% of the Earth's core is made up of iron. The world's iron ore reserves are estimated to be around 180 billion metric tons, with the largest reserves in India, China, Brazil, Russia, and Australia. Currently, approximately 2.5 billion tons of iron ore are mined each year, primarily to produce steel. That's enough to build countless skyscrapers, bridges, and vehicles. So, why is there so much iron? Iron is formed in the cores of massive stars through nuclear fusion. When these stars explode in supernovae, they spread iron throughout the universe. Over billions of years, this iron became part of the dust and gas that coalesced into our planet. The process of Earth's formation and its molten state allowed iron to sink to the core, where it remains abundant. Now let's turn our attention to gold and silver. Despite their allure, these precious metals are found in much smaller quantities. Earth contains only about 0.004 parts per million of gold and 0.07, 5 parts per million of silver in the crust. In total, it's estimated that there are about 19 million tons of gold on Earth, but only about 200,000 tons have been mined throughout history. For silver, there are approximately 500 million tons of silver, with about 1.7 million tons extracted so far. Gold and silver are often concentrated in certain areas of the Earth's crust through processes like fractional crystallization in magma and hydrothermal activities, where hot, mineral-rich water moves through rock formations. These processes are not as widespread, leading to limited deposits of these precious metals. Consider other elements on the periodic table. Lithium, crucial for batteries, is relatively abundant but is often found in brine deposits or in specific mineral ores. Uranium, essential for nuclear energy, is more concentrated in certain geological formations, but is still far less abundant than iron. On the other hand, rare earth elements, such as neodymium and europium, are only found in trace amounts, often in specific mineral veins, making them highly valuable but difficult to extract. In summary, the abundance of iron compared to the scarcity of gold and silver is primarily due to the geological and cosmic processes that form these elements. While iron is a major component of our planet's makeup, precious metals are much rarer and often found only in trace amounts. This brings us to an important point about the periodic table. It's generally true that elements at the beginning of the periodic table like hydrogen, helium, and carbon are more abundant than the heavier elements that follow. This is due to the processes in stellar nucleosynthesis, where lighter elements fuse to create heavier ones, often resulting in a decrease in their overall abundance. So, the next time you see a glimmering piece of gold jewelry or a silver coin, remember, it's not just a precious metal, it's a rare treasure shaped by the cosmos. 
Thank you for joining us today on Club Academia. If you enjoyed this exploration of Earth's elements, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more captivating content. Keep questioning and stay curious. Until next time.